Hey everyone, welcome to another live. Happy Feb February, it's February 1st, okay. when you're watching this. Um, and in this video, we're going to talk about a February challenge, since it was so highly requested. Um, I didn't have time to update the ADF document down below, but there will be some changes, caveats that I'll have inside of this little February challenge. So let's just get right into it. There is a downloadable PDF as usual. It is not updated. It is not updated, but it gives you the general rules. Okay. Um, as you're coming in, hit the like button. But for February, I want to do another seven day challenge. Okay. And this seven day challenge, okay. You can do either alternate day fasting or you can do OMAD. So OMAD is one meal a day. You can have like a 24, which is more realistic version of OMAD. In my opinion, having a one hour eating window as it traditionally is, um, welcome guys. Having a one hour eating window, it's not realistic. It's not enough to get enough, you know, nutrition in, which essentially is what you're doing on a, during your eating window. And, um, you know, you have more time to eat more greens. So if you're doing OMAD, it would be like 24, which means 20 hours fasting, for our eating window. And if you are doing ADF, which hello, ADF are here, um, alternate day fasting is a 36 hour window. Well, 36 hours of fasting followed by a day of 36 hours feasting, so on and so forth. So you have those two options, which was not in the previous January challenge, the new year challenge. So that's the February challenge, right? Today, you can technically call it day one. Whatever you're doing, today is day one. So whether you're feasting or fasting, is day one. We all don't have to be in sync. We're not like on our periods and have to line up. It's okay. So today is your day one. Congratulations, you did it. <laughs> um, whatever you need to do tomorrow is what you need to do tomorrow, okay? We don't all have to be on the same page. Usually it's very rarely that we are. Um, and third, we're adding a low carb element to it. We're adding low carb to this February challenge. Why? Because I really realized the power of low carb while intermittent fasting and I can't, I, I can't preach to you, eat what you want anyway. I re you can eat what you want, but the ease in which fast, it makes fasting, it, it's, I, I can't take that away. So those, those are the three changes. I will update the document and post it below as soon as I can, but the big three changes for this February challenge will be all right. It's seven days. I like seven days. It's a good amount of time to get accustomed and your body used to fasting regularly instead of like, you know, just whenever fasting, you need to stick to a pattern. Okay. Um, it's seven days. Today is day one, whatever you're doing, do the opposite tomorrow. You can do ADF, 36 hours, or you can do OMAD. You can do 24. I'm calling it 24, okay? 20 hours fasting with a four-hour feast window, but you have to pick one, you, one or the other. You cannot alternate, switch both for the seven-day challenge. So whichever you choose to, it will be the pattern you are following for the entire seven days, okay? And... um it's low carb. So that's the challenge part. Honestly, y'all, for one, I have never been low carb so consistently 
for such the la- the one time I ever tried keto, I did keto maybe like a week. <laughs> I got to a week and it wasn't it wasn't realistic for me. But low carb is realistic for me. Before I started this live, I had some teriyaki chicken thighs um, with cauliflower rice and some sweet potatoes, like a little bit of sweet potatoes. And guess what? I'm super, super duper satisfied. I had the small, like a small portion, but it was so satisfying because it was so nutrient dense and high protein. I don't miss any, I do not miss anything. If you're, excuse me. If your meals are not satisfying, if you feel like you need more food after you had a a healthy portion, there's a macronutrient that's off and it's more than likely your protein intake. If you feel like you're still hungry after having a full portion of a meal, more than likely you need to decrease your carbohydrates and highly increase your protein. Like double. If you have uh, a piece of chicken breast, have two. Decrease the the bun or the rice. It. I'm going on two and a half, almost three weeks now, low carb. I love it here. I really, I really, I love it here. I do. And so I have to infuse that into the challenge because it might, if you are a seasoned faster, it might be the difference you needed. It, it might be the key that you really needed to like either take you out of plateau, um, make fast days easier, um, really start seeing results on the scale and or in your pants, start seeing the cheeks chisel out have a smoother fast day period, have a very productive feast day. It's it's a game changer, y'all. It's a game changer. And once again, I'm saying low carbohydrate, not keto, because for me personally, I find keto as a diet that is unrealistic to my lifestyle per personally. If you're doing keto, bravo, bravo. I just want you to know that when you do something that helps you lose weight, you're more, nine times out of 10, you're going to have to do it forever. Okay. If you stop anything that helps you lose weight, whether you were going to the gym seven days a week, whether you were running um, 10 miles a, a day, whether you were ketoing, whether you were alternate day fasting, You are more than likely going to have to do that in order to maintain your weight loss for the rest of your life. So you have to make sure that what you're doing now is sustainable. With that, you have to lose impatience. Impatience is not an option here. Okay. Impatience is not an option here. You're not preparing for the Grammys. It's I know it's I know it's award season, but you're not going to the red carpet. Summer is a ways away. Unless you have a vacation coming up that you want to look snatched for, calm down. Calm, calm down, Sally. Because all this microwave results that you want, all it's gonna do is you're gonna hurry up and get there and then hurry up and get back fat. Just take your time. Where are you rushing to? This is not the fasting Olympics. This is what 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 is the rush? You know why? Because you need to see something so bad because you don't trust yourself. The problem is you don't trust yourself. So if you don't see the scale moving, if you don't see, if you don't like what you see in the mirror fast enough, you're gonna stop. But that's a shame on you because. Ultimately, all you need to do is be consistent, trust what you're doing and believe in yourself and you will, will get there. When is a different thing, but guess what? It is ensured progress. You can't progress if you keep quitting. It'll never happen. 
It will not happen. So the more you over there standing over the device on the floor that's going to dictate your happiness for the day with those three numbers, there's the, there's the less you're going to enjoy the journey, learn how to eat properly, learn how to exercise for health, okay? And think about the bigger picture instead of how fast can I lose weight today, this week, this month. It, it's really a punishment to yourself, honestly. It truly is. I'm over it. I really am. If I'm fine, if I'm going to do progress on anything, I'm taking photos. I'm taking it in this, the, the same clothes as much as possible because I like what I'm doing. I like how I feel. And if I if that's all that I'm getting out of it, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I fit my clothes. My stomach feels flatter. I'm working out to shape my body. Okay, increase my endurance so I'm not huffing and puffing up the office steps. Those things matter. Worrying about how much weight does... I don't know how many times... (laughs) I don't know how many times I'm going to tell you You are not entitled to weight loss. You are entitled to health. You are entitled to health because you're not put on this earth to be obese, to be waddling down streets, to be in um, overweight, stretchy clothes your whole life, to to hate what you see. You're not here for that. You're not here to hate what you see in the mirror. You're not here to can't catch up with your kids and worry if you'll ever uh, see your children's graduation. No. No, you're not here for that. You're here to be healthy, be energetic, move like humans are supposed to. Does it feel good to see the scale change? Absolutely. I would be kidding myself. But going on the scale... Every day, every two days, oh no, I didn't see something change. I drank water and I gained eight pounds. I need, I really, here's the thing. I need you to think about it logically, okay? I need you to think about it logically. 3,500 3, calories is one pound of weight. Unless you scarfed down Three times that. Let me let me calculate because I can't. <laughs> there, let's do times four. Say you have um four eating days in a week, right? Unless you scarf down an extra fourteen thousand calories in one week, honey, it's not you. You didn't gain weight. It's called water. And sometimes we retain that, especially as women. Okay. Um, My biggest advice to you would be to leave the scale alone. Leave the scale alone. Put the scale away. Take Before you put the scale away, take the batteries out the scale. Put the scale under the bed. Put it up in the closet. Or take it out your house. Okay. If you have doctor's appointments, use that to see. It's time to start. The reason I'm going on this rant is because I cannot believe how many people are just like sweating the scale. And I will, as many times as I say, you are not entitled to weight loss. You are entitled to health. If you focus on the health, the weight loss will come. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, which we all know what we're supposed to be doing, calories in, calories out, eat healthy, have vegetables, fruits and vegetables, drink water, more protein, exercise. We all know that. But for some reason, we want to make it way more difficult than it's supposed to be. And then beat ourselves up when the scale is is saying, I lost negative 0.5 pounds this week. I don't know. Just like, but do you feel good? Did, did, did you lose an inch or three? Like, can you tell me that? 
Are you a worse person now? Do you stomp on puppies? No. You're still a good person. And you're doing what you're supposed to do. Majority of the people that start ADF or any kind of intermittent fasting protocol, for the first even month or two, you're going to go through an adjustment period where your body is, is confused. It's confused. Your body is like, what is happening? Okay. Usually if you do something drastic and you're obese or morbidly obese, and you do something like ADF where you, even if you do with 16, eight, start with 16, eight, and you have a 16 hour fasting period and an eight hour window and you're morbidly obese or obese, you'll most likely in that first week lose a good amount of weight. Why? Your body is entirely inflamed. Inflammation is, is a biatch. Okay. It's not even just water weight. It's inflammation. That inflammation release is going to serve you very much well because your joints don't like it. Your, your skeletal system doesn't like it. Your musculature does not like being overweight. So as soon as it sees that, oh my God, this human has like given us a chance to do something else other than digest, process, and excrete. Now we could just take some weight off. Let's reduce this inflammation a little bit. Okay. After that inflammation reduction, you're going to have stabilization. That's why I say that the pattern is important because your body needs to start knowing what to expect. Okay. So if you're ADF, do ADF. If you're OMAD, do OMAD. If you're 16-8, do 16-8. And of course, as you get more into your journey and you're getting closer to your goal weight, you'll start switching up fasting patterns to start shocking the system. But in the beginning, you need to let your body know what's coming. Because guess what? If you don't, the body's going to start holding on. The body's going to hold on to weight. You might even gain weight. You might even gain weight. Because the body's like, I don't know when this human is going to feed me again. And my goal in this human's life is to survive. So since I'm not sure if she's starving or uh, in a famine or a drought, <laughs> I'm going to hold on to this weight just to protect them. Because... I'm, I'm nervous for it, this human. Your body's not wrong. Your body is not wrong. Let your body do what it needs to do. Start trusting yourself. It's really important. And if you don't trust yourself, I highly suggest you get to the bottom of it. Not, tr not trusting yourself, it will really get you killed. I'm serious. Not just health wise, but just in these streets. There's people that knew they shouldn't have went into the car. There's people that knew they shouldn't have opened the door. There's people that said I shouldn't have, you know, even spoken to that person. But I, I ignored my intuition. Your intuition is nothing but self trust. It's an instinct, and a lot of us ignore it. A lot of us ignore our guts. We're so used to ignoring it that we put ourselves in our own way. Start trusting yourself. Start making proper decisions. Start listening to your body. Your body usually tells you, oh my God, I'm still hungry. Huh? Maybe eat some more meat or some more protein. I'm full. I should, I should stop eating even though there's more food on my plate. I'm full, but there's still food on my plate. How many of us ignore the full and can keep eating until everything is done? You're part of the clean plate club. I, I grew up like that. I was told like I needed to finish everything on my plate. How did that help me? It told me to ignore my full signals and stop wasting food because the children in Africa... We all know about the children in Africa. They don't want our scraps. Okay, the leftover 
It, it, they don't want it. They're good. It will. It, it makes no difference. Dash it away. Dash it away. Away. Okay. Um. Off that tangent. This is going to be a Q and A. So if you have any questions, um, if you came in late, type them down in the chat. We talk. We talk. But let's talk about the sponsor of this video. It's me. Uh, the sponsor of this video is uh, Hello Blessings, the Fast to Feast ADF guide made by me. I created a complete guide for those who are new and true to ADF. It discusses ADF, um, everything you need to know, maintenance, what to eat, treat or strict fasting. Um, it even has a part in the back for journaling, which I highly emphasize in your journey. This is a true, complete, all-in-one guide of everything I've ever preached on this channel that you've ever heard me say in one nice little thick guide that you can use and refer to any given chance you want. It is available in the link down below in my description box. Um, for those who are ordering, it is credit card. PayPal is currently down until we um, are more established. So if you're ordering, it is through like just regular means. But I'm truly very proud of this book. <laughs> That's me on the back. Ew. There's also an ebook if you're interested, if you're international. Um, and yeah, there's an international, there's international. You could check it out and um, head over to the website. The link is in the description. Um, soon the books will be available elsewhere, such as Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, there's no audiobook in the works. <laughs> I know some people ask that. I don't, I don't know. Do you want to hear a, like, can you, it's like Daria saying a, a whole book. My voice is too dry for all that, but, um, and for those who have ordered the physical book, please just give us a little bit of time. We're making sure everything is right and we're shipping them out as soon as possible. Don't you worry. But for those who have the ebook, um, if you've looked over it, please let me know what you think of it so far and, um, feel free to share reviews inside the ADF group, the free Facebook ADF group, which you have access to. A link is also down below in the description box. Um, head over there. If you want to be a part of the challenge, you could add your picture and um, communicate with other members. We are 16,800 strong over there and growing. It's really um, a beautiful, uplifting, motivational, empowering support group with majority women, but there's some men in there and, you know, it's, we're all in this together. It's private. So, you know, if you want to share things, feel like that's your little venting area. Wonderful. Um, but yes, the fast to feast guide. I, I can't, I'm super proud of this. It is a great encompassing book. Um, treat fasting versus strict fasting. Um, mistakes to avoid, which is a lot. I, this is a good, a good chapter because a lot of this are things that are always asked. It's almost like frequently asked questions. Focusing on your why. There's a chapter about your why. If you're going into this, you need to know like why, what's your why? What's propelling you? What is your motivational force for even doing this? Because fasting, as much as people want to treat it as weight loss, it's very spiritual. Fasting is a very spiritual um, task not because you are becoming so attuned to yourself. You're resetting all these um, hormones. You are starting to understand true cues and triggers. And you're not able to use food as a comfort. So it's just a wonderful time to get really spiritual. And if you're strict fasting, which is... Um, you know, you're not having anything that's getting you into 
um, you're getting into autophagy. Autophagy is that process in which cell renewal, recycle, repair, and um, the process of switching over from running on glycogen to key to ketones. The high you experience being in ketosis, it, it's truly spiritual. It's really spiritual. So I, I, there was um, a recommendation I made if if you find yourself struggling on fast days, is like dedicate your fast. Dedicate your fast to um, someone, something. Um, fast for a loved one. Fast for your future. Fast for the Lord. Fast, you know, in gratitude. Like, thank you, dear Lord, for everything you've provided me. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to give up in order to gain you know, it's, it's just a really peaceful thing. So, you know, start approaching fasting with different point of views. If you are waking up and you are dreading fasting, it's time to reassess. I'm serious. And it's not to say like, oh, you can't do it. But when you're really into fasting, there comes a time where you start craving fasting. And that's my goal for you. It's like the feeling of not worrying about eating, the um, the decision fatigue, which is a big one. Like, oh my God, what am I going to eat for breakfast? What am I going to eat for lunch? Oh, I need a snack. Oh, am I going to go downstairs? I have to spend money. That's all gone. Um, you know, you save money. It's just a really freeing process. But if you're dreading fast day, you need to stop and think about what it is you're dreading. If you don't like the feeling of being uncomfortable, you might have to stop treat fasting, which is adding coffee to your creamer. Sometimes even coffee altogether might be triggering your insulin response, making it harder for you to have a longer fast. It it was for me. Do I still drink coffee on fast days? Yes, but I know that it makes it harder. If a lot of people aren't aware of this, I only became aware of coffee triggering an uh, insulin response when I decided for a week, actually it was during my 72 hour fast where I did a fast for 72 hours to help with my fibroids, which it did. I was bleeding for three weeks and stopped by the end of the, the three day fast. But, um, crap. As soon as I get off topic, <laughs> I forget. And don't worry, I'm going to read the chat. But I just want to make sure I, I pack the intro of this video with as much information as possible. But, damn, where was I? What was I saying? What was I saying? Anyways. Yeah. Let me read the comments because I, I plum forgot. Let me tell you, why Vance saying fixing everything, okay? <laughs> uh, thank you for the congrats, um, everyone. I'm very proud of it. It doesn't feel like me selling anything. It, it feels like an extension of what I'm supposed to do for this community, which is create this guide. I don't feel, like, I have no problem plugging this, mainly because, like, it's almost, it. it's it's necessary for my community, for the ADFers, for everyone that has been listening to me for years, it this was necessary. And I'm super proud of it. It is such a helpful guide. Um, yeah. Check it out in the description box. Thank you so much. I will be sponsoring it every day because who else am a sponsor? <laughs> I ain't sponsoring nobody. Mm. Oh yeah. So February challenge, whatever today is, this is what today is. So you're going to do the opposite tomorrow. Today is day one. Congratulations. You made it through day one. If you were fasting, wonderful. Tomorrow is feast day. Um, if you are feasting today, tomorrow's fast day. Um, you're going to make sure that you are having low carbs. Even if you don't do low carb all day, mandatory low carb dinner, mandatory low carb dinner, 
mandatory low carb dinner. What did I have for dinner? I literally like ate before. <laughs> um, I had teriyaki chicken thighs, delicious from Aldi, already seasoned in the air fryer. Did I mention I got an air fryer? It's wonderful. It's like Frank's hot sauce. I put that on everything. Like everything goes into the air fryer. I love it here. I love it here. Um, I had some cauliflower rice and a, a wee little bit of sweet potatoes, both of which I put in the air fryer as well. <laughs> and it was wonderful. I do need to get some more fermented foods. I forgot to put my sauerkraut, but I kind of, it's not ketobiotic, which is um, what Dr. Mindy Peltz like kind of pushes because it's not keto, but it's definitely low carb. And I do want to infuse ketobiotic foods into my diet more to help with gut health. Um, probiotics are good. I have my greens that I take. Um, I put apple cider vinegar on all of my salads. I just bought some kefir. So I'm going to put that in smoothies, which is great for gut health. I need to get some kimchi. These are all probiotic things that are essential in the diet to have healthy gut. Because if your gut's not healthy, you're not healthy. If your gut's not healthy, you're not healthy. Um, okay. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I need to do low carb for my high cholesterol and prediabetes. Yeah. Listen, okay, if there's anything that you're going to get out of your diet, like the three the three top things to remove from your diet is going to be processed foods. It's going to be sugar and it's going to be alcohol. If you're doing those three, then you should be like on track because once you remove those three, it's like majority of what you're eating has no labels, which is the goal to eat things that don't come in packaging. You know, vegetables, proteins. Um, the less you can eat out of a package, the better. The less you can eat out of a package, the better. Thank you to pinch. You're not even the fault. I'll be going home. I'm breaking my heart. Like, eat high fat to feel satiated and fasting all day. So, so easier. Absolutely. I um buy these little guacamole cups because I can never like, I hate when guacamole in the container goes brown. So I get the little single serve cups, scoop it out, put it with my food. It'll last so much longer because when you're doing like ADF, Things go bad. Every majority of what I have is frozen. Majority of what I have is frozen because I just having fresh food while being an alternate day faster is so annoying. So annoying. Can I have oatmeal wet while ADFing? On absolutely. Have your oatmeal, especially early in the day when you're moving around. Oatmeal is very good fiber. It's very good for your cholesterol. It's very good for satiation. Patterns are very important because the body will follow through. Yep. On the second chapter of the book, yay. Yeah, it's not like a, a hard read or anything. It's, you know, it's a mainly a guide. Um, a lot of things to refer to. Hi, Colleen. Is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday good enough to do ADF? Sure. That's um, it's like called 5-3. True ADF is every other day you're eating, right? Just every other day. Um, but Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, fine by me. But if you're doing the challenge, you need to be doing the challenge. That it doesn't count for the challenge. If you're just doing regular life, fine by me. If you're doing the challenge, you need to pick one and do it for the seven days. I started OMAD low carb today. I was going to alternate day with ADF, but I'll listen to sticking. Yeah. Stick with one. 
I'm also choosing the OMAD low carb route primarily because I really, okay, I learned two things. I really want to eat my vegetables. <laughs> I have some fresh vegetables and I really want to eat them and I like I like eating my vegetables. So that's one reason why I'm doing OMAD. And then the second one is I've been very consistent doing my Lumen, which is um, I've shown you in previous lives. It's like a breathalyzer and it can read the you read your CO2 levels in your breath. And it could tell whether you're running off carbs or fat. So I primarily see that if I fast too long from what I'm seeing with the results, what I'm seeing with the results from my lumen is that if I fast too long, I'm not in, I don't end up burning fat. I end up burning carbs. Why is this? Because there's no such thing as one size fits all fasting. And you'll you will never know that without something like that, like the lumen or even a um glucose monitor. You know, one of those like glucose monitors that you can put on and just check any time of the day. You won't know that unless you have something to gauge it. With those readings, I'm understanding that if I fast too long, I will end up, it backfires on me. And it's saying that although I've lost weight, ideally 36 hours for me is not ideal. Okay. It's not ideal for me. So I'm going to be playing around with 24 and see, because once again, stress, <laughs> fasting is stressful. Fasting is stressful. Um, and over fasting can backfire. And that's why I say like in the group, don't promote any 48 hours plus, please. There's no 48 hours plus here because one, I don't, I don't, um, promote that. I don't promote extended fasts fast. And, um, for two, it's not necessary for weight loss it can and will backfire because a lot of our bodies don't like extended fasting multiple times a week. It's one thing if you do it multiple times a year, multiple times a week. And then they see like the scale isn't moving and then they're like, oh my God, I need to go longer. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I need to eat less. I'm going to work out more. No, 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 no. What the scale is trying to tell you is that your cortisol is going up, ma'am. And it's preparing you for survival mode. So if you've been doing anything like over fasting, under eating, over working out, and nothing's changing, it's because your body doesn't like it. It's just that simple. <laughs> it's really that simple. Oh, ice spice is stuck in my head. I'm so mad. I lost four pounds first week of Jan and weighed myself today and had lost nothing, but I lost two inches off my waist and one inch off my arm. So I'll keep going. Great. That's awesome. That's what matters. Inches matter because you're going to lose fat. You're always going to lose fat. Incorporating low carb this month. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, I can't believe it took me this long, honestly, because I was, I guess, yeah. I guess that's why I went into ADF in the first place is because I have a black or white, all or nothing kind of mentality. And I still do. I'm I'm a pretty all or nothing person. But as I get older and I start like understanding like this isn't everything. Do I want to look a certain way? Do I have a certain goal? Yes, absolutely. But I have I have better things to worry about in life then can I have this cookie or, you know, is this weighing food? That sucks. Um, is my, is my eating window open now? Is it closed? Anybody got time for that? 
So with a low carb diet now, I'm kind of like free in a way because I'm still eating things I, I really enjoy. I'm breaking away from sugar addiction and I'm really satisfied. My energy levels are going up. My stomach is leaning out like crazy. I'm having regular bowel movements. I, I feel good. Like I, I had that little bit of food and I'm so sad. Like it's just wild to me. I could easily eat up entire tray of Chinese food, beef and broccoli or white rice. I would sit down and eat the entire tray, but I had like two chicken thighs, a cup of cauliflower rice and a half a cup of sweet potatoes. And I'm stuffed. <laughs> I, it's wild to me. And I love it here. I love it here, y'all. And you don't have to go extreme. Don't be in the men- mindset of being extreme. Like today, my kids couldn't finish some oatmeal cookies. And they're like, here, mommy. And it was like four cookies. And I was looking at, I looked at the cookies and I was like, and I was like, what do I do with these cookies? And then I was like, Colleen, it's okay. This is life. And I eat the cookie. Like I, it was like four baby cookies, but I had the mindset like, oh, it's all or nothing. You can't eat them because you know, it's against the, no, I'm over, I'm 80% low carbohydrate. This 20% is not going to make or break me. And this is how I'm learning a healthy mindset, a he- developing a healthy relationship with food. And I love it here. Like I really, this is called maturity. This is called growth. All the years of fasting, I feel like this is what it it should be coming down to. A healthy relationship with food where you just naturally want to eat, like you crave health. You want vegetables you enjoy making the right choice on the menu. You don't need to overindulge in anything because you don't feel deprived. That's the thing too. It's like if you over restrict, when you finally get your hands on something, you're going to eat the whole box, the whole container, the whole bag, because you felt like it was such a taboo item. I had those four cookies uh, and I had the pack in my cabinet for the longest. And I was like, and he gave me his little four cookies. I had them and I'm good. They don't even taste that great. Now I don't crave them anymore. Like they could truly just be for my son's lunchbox. This is growth y'all. It's not that all or nothing like need it now, have to do it like this mentality. It is called life. You ever looked at people who are slim and naturally thin and, you know, just like keep their weight in check and you're like, how do they do that? They have a healthy relationship with food. They have a healthy relationship with food. Nothing is off the, nothing is off their charts. Nothing is like they have everything in truly in moderation. They enjoy whatever. They they eat smaller because they just don't need as much because they don't feel so restricted. It's just it's it's really weird and lovely at the same time because I didn't think I didn't think I would get there, you know? I that's what I want for you. I want you to learn because you can't ADF forever. You can't, you can't ADF forever. You can intermittent fast forever for the rest of your life. Absolutely. And I highly encourage it because fasting is something we all naturally do anyway. Right. But you can't ADF forever. You will eventually have to learn how to eat normally. You, this can't be your cheat code forever. Oh, I ate like crap today. I'm just going to fast tomorrow. It, It has to stop. It's, it's a dangerous cycle. Um, you have to learn how to eat for daily 
moderation and consumption. It's just, it's mandatory. It's the goal. I stopped weighing every single day because of the book. <laughs> I only weigh once a month. That feels so much better. Yeah. 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 I, I feel that Ava, by the way, Ava is, um, my book co-conspirator. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that scale, it's disrespectful that you will, you will wake up, look in the mirror, like Ooh, the stomach, that's you girl. And then all this like energy, you're like, okay, I know if I'm looking this good, I know I lost weight. And then you step one, you're like, I don't even have to take off my nightgown today. Cause I know I lost weight. You step on it and it hurts your feelings. It hurts your feelings. Tell me you don't feel discouraged. Tell me you don't feel like all those days of and hours of fasting was for naught. Tell me you don't, you don't, you didn't ruin your day. Tell me, tell me you didn't. Please tell me. I admire you because you must be a scientist. You are able to just genuinely see the scale for what it is, which is data. It's just data. Okay. Okay. I understand. I understand. And you step off and you're able to just be okay. I love that for you. Majority of us aren't. No, it's not that way. All of a sudden, that cuteness that you thought you saw in the mirror. <laughs> I knew I was fat. I'm fat. I'm not losing anything. Fat. Ugh. I don't need to fast today. I'm not fasting today because it's the, what's the point? What's the point? It's going to be fat forever. What's, what's the point? That's how most people are. That's how most people are going to be. They're going to become discouraged, unmotivated. Anything they thought nice about themselves is like, all of a sudden the pants don't fit anymore. All of a sudden the neck, the neck don't look skinny anymore. All of a sudden you have an attitude. Kids are like, mommy, what's wrong? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> just, just mad. Just mad for no reason. Why? Because you hurt your own feelings. Just take just take the feelings you have in the mirror. If you like it, beautiful. Keep going. If you don't like it, change it. Change it. If you feel a little bloated, hey, cut back on the carbs. Watch out for any sugar intake. Watch out for the sodium. Don't drink the alcohol. Okay? And if you love it, that means you're doing something right. You don't need the scale to come break your heart. I'm extra. <laughs> hey, Jamisha. Oh, Jamisha. You know, the funny thing is I was going through um, my community tab because I was looking for FAQs. And I saw that I had reposted your, your ADF video a while ago. Welcome. Hugs to you, sis. Y'all go check out Jamisha. Jamisha T. Um, she has a great YouTube channel focused on like health and fitness and fasting. And she hella pretty. She hella cute. She's a thickum. She's curvy. We love that. We love to see it. Hi, Carmen. My appetite has significantly decreased since ADF. Uh, okay. I don't know why it took me a second to process what I just said. <laughs> Woo. On my feast day, I struggle to hit over. Wow. You struggle to hit over 1200 calories. As my last weigh in, my maintenance is 1700. Is this mental? I don't know what to do. Okay. So with that, here's what I want you to do. Sunshine. I want you to eat until you're, you're done. Okay. Whatever calories that looks like, whatever calories that feels like, sure. Okay. As long as those calories are nutrient dense, it's not like wasteful calories, like a pasta or, you know, 
crackers, some, I, as long as those 1200 calories are nutrient dense, okay? Whatever. You don't have to hit anything, right? I'm, I'm just saying this for you if you're struggling. Ideally, would I like you to at least have 2000? Yes. Here's what your body is going to do because your body is brilliant. Your body, all of our bodies are so smart. Your body one day after doing ADF or for how many days and you just existing on 1200 calories, one of those days, your body is going to be like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And when that day happens, you're going to eat until you're satisfied and it will easily be a lot more calories. Your body is going to accommodate. Some, t- some days your, your feast day is just me. Some days your feast days are going to be like, Whoa. why? There's going to be a, a huge deficit of calories, especially if you're doing true ADF. There's going to be a massive deficit. And one, one of those days, your body is going to be like, I need to make up some of those calories. Respect the hunger. Respect the hunger cues. And you're just going to eat more. If you're 1200 and you're not trying to be 1200, then let it be. Just make sure it's nutrient dense. Um, and any given day when your body is like, I need more calories, just respect it. Okay. You have um, another portion, you add a protein smoothie, have a protein bar, some Greek yogurt, or, you know, have an extra egg in your omelet, whatever. But your body is going to ask for more one of these days because you're not supposed to be existing off of 1200 calories, um, especially while doing alternate day fasting. So just respect that. Thank you guys for the love on the book. Really appreciate it. Once again, the link is down below. Hit that link. Hit that link. Shop the Fast to Feast Guide. Ooh, ooh. You're going to see it every video. So um, if I don't promote me, who will? Who will? People out here promoting Louis Vuitton like they have stock in the company. This is my, this is my baby. Of course I'm going to promote her. Yamad. Congratulations. As a man, I'm not ashamed to say, oh, no, I lost you. Dang, I need to catch up on these <laughs> these comments. Oh, as a man, I'm not ashamed to say I watch your channel religiously. Oh, hi, Byron. That's funny because all I do is talk to women. <laughs> all I do is talk about periods and leveling up and glow ups and press on nails and um, titties and all that stuff. So, you know, welcome, Girls Club. Yes, there will be an audiobook, says who, Ava? <laughs> if there was an audiobook, it would have to be Barbara Walters. <laughs> And she did, so. Anyone feel fatigue and low energy on fast days? Appetite is fine, just very sluggish. Absolutely. That's why I switched to low carb. I don't feel that anymore. I don't feel it anymore. Because I'm not doing the transition out of running on sugar to switching over to running on fat. If you suck on a fast day, Try low carb. I can't believe I'm the woman like preaching low carb. Like that's so wild to me because I'm hashtag rice is life. I'm over here promoting cauliflower rice now. It makes such a different, y- y'all, my stomach is so flat now. Like I can't, I can't deal. I can't wait to see what this, and you know, the great thing about it is it's like, it's progressive. Like, it's not like I wake up one day and I'm like, oh, okay, I look good. And then the next day I'm like, oh, I look bloated. It's every day, whether I eat, whether I fast, but it's just like, if you are low carb, you have no choice but to like be lean. I'm so mad. I'm just like, and I don't miss anything. I don't miss anything. I really don't. I think I think the biggest thing was like rice cuz I really like I'm west my family is Jamaican. We grow up on rice. Like rice rice is really life for us. And 
I was like, how am I ever going to be low carb? That sounds like a sin in the eyes of <laughs> the Jamaican prime minister. <laughs> but y'all, low, try low carb. Try low carb for this seven day challenge. And you could also download the PDF. It's free. I do need to adjust it because I didn't have a chance to adjust the PDF for February. But if you just do the seven days, you could do ADF or OMAD or 24 um, and low carb, low carb. Okay. Oh, thank you all so much for the love on the book. Thank you. About fasting, it's definitely spiritual for me. I actually love fasting. Been spiritual fasting for over 27 years, but doing the natural intermittent fasting of some sort for over eight to 10 years. Wow, that is beautiful, Sharon. Yeah, fasting is definitely um, something that just makes you so much more in tune with yourself. And when you're in tune with yourself, you're able to get better signals better signals. You're able to just like really receive. So like if you're praying while fasting, that's like on a different level of prayer. Prayer while fasting? You know, some people struggle to hear God. No, he's loud and clear when when you are fasted. I'm, I don't want to make this too religious because I know like I have a very wide audience, but I love God. <laughs> Chad, everyone is, what did Chad say? Who's Chad? Everyone is different. I have to have Stevie on my coffee. Okay. Some people are triggered by sweet tasting things. Treat versus strict. Do whatever works for you. Absolutely. Whatever works for you. The best thing though is, is strict fasting. Honestly, like it's, it's the easiest way to do your fasting, but if you feel like you need something, then in, you have a splash of your creamer, have your stevia, um, get your, your flavored, um, what is it called? Electrolytes, you know, do what you feel you need to do. But ideally strict fasting is the easiest way to get through fasting. Just like water, even coffee is iffy. I'm serious because a lot of people don't know that coffee might trigger their insulin response. And once the insulin response is triggered, then all of a sudden you're craving or you get like that, um, that wave that you want to eat something. And it's that eat something wave that some of us can't make it through. So the simpler, the better, the simpler, the better, the simpler, the better. It always works like that. Hi, Darcy. Colleen, can we recommend someone's products in the Facebook group? Have someone to refer who makes healthy cold press elixirs and was on QVC. I'll get back to you on that one. I will get back to you on that one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. I think I think it goes against one of the community rules. If it's a mention, that's fine, but if it's a promotion, I don't think so. Cuz there's no like promotion or spam in the in the group rules. But if you want to mention it, I think that should be fine. But not like numerous posts, okay? Yeah, numerous dedicated posts. Um, I'm struggling to eat. Okay. Oh, struggling to eat my maintenance calories. Yeah. So I, I got to you, Sunshine. I've been I've been making my own fermented vegetables. I have some fermented bell peppers in the fridge now. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, carrots are actually really good for women's health. A very hormone balancing um vegetable. I just bought a bag of baby carrots I've been snacking on, which are very sweet. <laughs> like I didn't realize how sweet carrots were. Like they're really sweet and delicious. Um, and I love giving my kids vegetables instead of like, <laughs> it's 
going to stay like fries. I give them fries too, but then I balance it out with the vegetables. Um, yeah, they like, they like fresh vegetables. So I like to cut up cucumbers for them. I'll even give them like mini salads, um, carrots with some little dressing on it. You know, kids, if you, if a kid could dip something, they'll like it. Whether it's a piece of broccoli or a nugget, they'll eat it. If you could dip it, they'll eat it. They'll dip the pancake. Like even <laughs> they'll dip it. If you could dip it, they'll eat it. So try to get your kids to dip. And I always get those like section plates. If you find your kids are having issues with like eating a variety of things, get the section plates. It's for some reason it always works. Like having a variety of things, even if they have like one or two from it, it's more than likely they'll eat it from like a little section plate. I don't know what it is. I guess their eyes are just like, oh, what's that? I love it. Ever since I got that, I just, I feel like I've expanded their palates a lot more too because I want to fill up each compartment. So I'll put like either fruits or vegetables or salad, um, a side and a protein. It's wonderful. <clears throat> I'm lucky to have a roommate right now that eats everything I don't on the days I don't eat. Nothing goes to waste and food is so much cheaper for me now. I'm not eating three meals every day. Absolutely. Save money. It's a silent recession. I found that I have to eat low carb. Otherwise, I'm sluggish on my feast days. Girl, like the energy. I'm, I'm, what day am I on? I'm, oh, I'm on the energy. I didn't know it could be like this. And I'm really like, I don't know why I feel some kind of way that I have to like eat crow and, uh, cause I was the non keto queen and I'm still like quiet oh, keto, but the low carb life and intermittent fasting, you cannot lose. You can't, they literally go hand in hand. They're really like peanut butter and jelly. They really do. I'm on day 10 of the Chloe Tang challenge. I'm doing the 2024 weight loss challenge. When I tell you I do the workouts and could easily do like the next day, I don't know what's gotten into me. <laughs> the energy is just so, go slaps. The energy slaps. I'm drinking um, electrolytes, by the way. <clears throat> Trying to not let you hear my like loud ass swallowing. Uh um, <clears throat> I keep losing weight in my legs. I feel that. And not as much in my upper body. I have added strength training. Any other advice? So I, like you, have um, skinny leg syndrome. And uh, the only thing that cured it for me was heavy strength training. <clears throat> heavy lifting on my lower body and little to no weights on my upper body because I build muscle easily, but especially in my upper body. Um, I look like, what's the name? The Craft? You know that movie with the, the witches? <laughs> this is like a, a cover-up. <laughs> but I'm like, I look like some witch. Anyways, yeah, heavy strength training did it for me. Heavy lifting is like, I don't know what it would equate to for you, but for me, it was definitely like 75 pounds and up building onto it. Having a routine, I had um, a whole video about strength training while doing ADF. It's a while back, but I had my holy trinity. It was <clears throat> leg press, abductor, machine. And um, back extensions. Holy Trinity. <laughs> A lot of religious references. But those three. Throw in some calves. I'm losing some booty now because I stopped. I stopped the heavy strength training. But when I get closer to my goal... Heading back to the gym. Heading back to the gym. Heavy strength training is the way. If you're running a lot, stop. Stop. 
So Colleen, should I reorder my book? And if I was the first 50 people, um, if you ordered through PayPal, you, your order went through, but we removed the PayPal feature. But, um, yeah, PayPal is on hold until they see we're a real business. So for now, you'll definitely still get your gift. Hi, Colleen, can you suggest what we can do when extremely cold during ADF? <laughs> I went through this yesterday too. I was fasting the whole time I was in the office and I was her raising and I went to my boss. I was like, are you cold? And he was like, no, he was in a short sleeve and everything. I was like, I am freezing. And that's honestly the first time I really felt like that while fasting. And the funny thing is when I went to him, he was like, well, I noticed you didn't eat today. Maybe because you didn't eat. Cause you know, when you eat, you, your body fires up. I was like, for one, why are you watching me? <laughs> for two. <laughs> Mind you, this man is in another cubicle <laughs> for two. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Because you know, you notice like if you ate something and all of a sudden you're like hot and sweating. Yeah. The body starts going to work. That metabolism starts firing up. I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's not a phenomenon because we know like why it's happening. And that's funny because I was around 26 hours into the fast as well. I didn't break my fast until I got home from work, which was after 6, 6.30. And I had a big ass salad. And then that was it for the night. I love I love it here. I love it here. Fat, and when I tell you it was easy, fasting that amount of time, having a big ass salad, and then walking before I go to bed and then going to bed. I did, I wasn't craving anything. I had no, no I was just good. Y'all, the low, low carb life. I can't believe it. I got an infrared sauna blanket for the fasting chills. Plus I detox sweat and heat up my deep tissues of fat stores. Mm. I like that. Infrared sauna blanket. That sounds nice and warm. I have three options for fasting, either 20, 24, or 36 hours. It varies on how good I feel on my fast days. I'm fasting today and I feel great. Yeah. We think about food all the time. What about it? Um, no, I get it. I get it. Um. When you say you think about food, like what is it? Are you hungry or you just like can't wait to eat? Are you like just thinking about what to order, like what to get at the grocery store? Like what is the, what are you thinking about as far as food? Because if you're thinking about food all the time, it could be because you're malnourished. And when I say malnourished, that doesn't mean you don't eat. It's just like you're not getting enough satiety out of the foods you're eating. I didn't know about satisfaction until I really started low carb and not just low carb, but high protein, low carb, like high protein made the difference for me because I am naturally muscular. My body just requires a lot more protein than the average girl. I'm 5'10". I, I look like an athlete and I needed more protein in my diet. I've tried to go plant-based numerous times and not tried as in like it was unsuccessful, but I realized that I just was not meeting my protein needs through plant-based. And um, I just, I need, I need some protein in my life. That's just me though. I come to this conclusion that I need, I need um, a high protein diet. The cookie represents ADF maturity. I love the fasting discipline one gets. Yeah. Yeah. After a while, when you, it, when you combine intermittent fasting, ADF, with low carb, you crave, no, you like, you crave nothing. 
And even if you did like, ha if, like I had, I had the cookies, right? I didn't want more. I did not want more because it was nothing I was craving anymore. And those four, those four little cookies, and mind you, they're like yay big. Those four little cookies satisfied any inkling that I wanted out of trying those cookies. Because if I had one, I would have had the whole bag, scarfed it down, and then like, okay. But those four little cookies, they just satisfied what I needed. They didn't even taste all that great, and I was good to move on. And I had my little teriyaki chicken, okay? I'm working on not weighing myself so much. Oh, yeah. The scale is going to hurt your feelings. It's the week before my period. So I've been fasting this whole week. Okay. Hi, Rose. Yeah, the reason I even started low carb was to prevent weight gain during my premenstrual week. And I just kept it up. I just kept it up. I, I'm very happy here. I really am. So that's how I tried to counter any weight gain or falling off was I just went low carb for the week before my period and smooth sailing, smooth sailing. I've been using my freezer more often to allow myself to have sweets or other items and freeze the rest for later. I used to feel I have to eat it all within one to three days exactly and not waste it, but not now. Awesome. Right. Exactly. The freezer is your best friend while ADFing. Colleen, get ready because talk shows are coming for you. This can't not only be for YouTube and Facebook. Wouldn't that be nice? I want to be on um, the morning show with Kathy and Hoda. Is it Kathy? No, it's Jenna. It's Jenna. Jenna and Hoda. Hoda and Jenna. That'd be nice. I see Janae Naylor. If you follow her, she's like a style YouTuber. She's on there doing fashion segments. Wow. That'd be awesome. I would love to go on a talk show. Hosting it? God, no. But just like coming on, speaking really fast, and then ending my segment three, three minutes later, I'll do that. Yeah. And meet a producer. <laughs> Anyways. Ooh, you've been loving this week of heavy lifting. Okay, love that for you. Yeah, that's actually a good point. As long as it's not too strenuous during your... The, the, the reason we take a break the week before your period is to not raise cortisol because in the presence of cortisol is the absence of progesterone, which is that necessary hormone needed in order to start to bleed. All right. So if we're stressed out, if we're doing things that are too heavy, if we are fasting, like overly fasting, that's like 13 hour, hours or more. If we are doing a, a marathon, like the goal is to be as <clears throat> relaxed, as stress-free, as gone with the wind as possible during that week. And this, this is not just for fasters. This is, this is for women, for women, for healthy menstruating women. You want to start respecting your hormones. Cause I said, there's a womb apocalypse happening. There is a womb apocalypse happening where women can get pregnant. I'm watching real housewives of Potomac and there's two young housewives going through IVF. And what, what, when did this happen? You know what they both have in common? Hectic ass lives. Hectic lives, which is the plight of the modern day woman. We all have one, two, three jobs. We all have four, five, six businesses. We all have seven, eight, nine side hustles. We all have families. Uh, people to take care of, 
we, we property owners, we property managers, we pay in bills, we're living very stressful lives. The week before your period is the time you need to respect yourself. Forget yourself. To respect your womb. Respect your womanhood. Because if you feel like you can't calm down during this week before your period, you are way too in your masculine. You are way too masculine for your own good. Have a seat. As a woman, you need to ha learn what having a seat is like. Learn the possibilities of what having a seat is like because a lot of people a lot of women they want soft life and when soft life happens they don't know what to do with soft life i got to do this but what about that and i got to do this and what about have a seat learn how to rest as a feminine because the feminine is about relaxing you have to learn how to just be the rest of the month, you can run up and down, climb trees if you want. But the week before your period, the ten, the the five to ten days before your period, and it really depends on when you start feeling these the symptoms. Which, if you were if you were having a healthy hormone cycle, you wouldn't even feel symptoms. Honestly, and that that was the thing for me. Like I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't. I never had PMS for real. Like I've, I don't, I don't really experience PMS. Learn to have a seat. Learn to have a seat, and that's what I did that week before my period, which is um why I started the low carb. I just, I learned how to just stop stressing myself out, and I love it here. I love it here too. I love it there, and I love it here. <laughs> Women, ladies, please, if you're a menstruating woman, respect your womanhood and give yourself seven days of break. Do not, oh, do not fast, okay? Don't raise your cortisol. Do not pick up heavy things. Do not uh, schedule something that's stressful that week, if you can, okay? If you can. If you can do your best to be in a state of peace so you could healthily bleed. So you're not spotting or skipping or irregular. If you're trying to get pregnant and, and you can't get pregnant, like all of this, it's, it's piling up into something. This is not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's very obvious what's happening. We don't know how to have a seat. Get out your masculine. Step into your feminine, especially the week before your period. It's really that simple. It's that simple. It's that simple. My blue plate arrives today in time for feasting tomorrow. Blue light. Blue plate arrives on Tuesday. Blue light. My blue plate. What's a blue plate? Is that like the, um, those home kits, those food kits, like HelloFresh or something. I I was looking into that, if that's what it is. I wouldn't mind doing one of those home kits. But I feel some kind of way paying for lettuce in a box. If it was like a regular meal, like pastas and stuff, sure, but I'm not doing that. So I'm not gonna... Eh. What's your advice about doing ADF while taking antibiotics? Don't. Antibiotics have to be taken with food or it'll eat out your gut lining. Antibiotics are the worst. They will wipe, like, if people understood how destructive antibiotics are, it's, it's basically like, it's like chemotherapy. It wipes out everything, good and bad. If people understood that antibiotics was like equivalent to chemotherapy, they'd really beware of taking antibiotics. Like it wipes out everything, good and bad. And it's damn near impossible to get it back.
<sighs> it has loads of veggies and decent amount of meat. It just feels weird to not be able to eat the same. Thank you so much for responding. You're welcome. What is the book called? It's called Fast to Feast ADF Guide. And you can shop the link down below. And there's also an ebook if you want it now o'clock. Okay, so you can get the physical. It has a nice little journal in the back. Hmm. Yeah, and these are also other books that um, were published by Ava. Okay. And there's a journal in the back. So yeah, there's like a journal. And then there's goals. And of course, like, you know, different chapters, the importance of journaling, the last 10 pounds, that's a good chapter. You know, some people are close to their goals, how to restart if you fall off. Gems in here, gems in here. Self-love, magic is in the mindset. <clears throat> so yeah, the link is down below in the description box. It's the top link. Don't don't look any further. It's the literally the first link. Colleen, I just want to say thank you for the motivation to do hard things. I'm trying low carb this month. If you have tips on eating cottage cheese, help us this out. Um, my pleasure, Margaret. I'm happy to be here to motivate you to do hard things because on the other side of discomfort is the life you want to live, the life you deserve, you know, because deserving people have to go through hard things. That's that's what separates the um, the deserving from the mediocre, okay? The process that weeds out people that discomfort, they'll fall off. Those that went through and went on the other side, they're deserving. <clears throat> so uh, you're welcome. Cottage cheese. <clears throat> um, honestly, I'm not a big cottage cheese person. My mom used to love the cottage cheese with the pineapple at the bottom. <laughs> that was really good. Um, I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any tips on eating cottage cheese. Uh, Pinterest has been my best friend. I have a whole low carb meals board saved with tons of salads and air fryer meals and um, you know, stuffed pepper recipes and zucchinis. And I love Pinterest with all my heart. I love That's my favorite social media. Is it social media? Yeah, social media. That's my favorite social media. It's so inspiring. It's so uplifting. I get workout and hair and all kind of stuff without seeing a whole bunch of horrible comments and um, things I didn't ask for. I just, I love Pinterest with all my heart. Chef's kiss. You type in and you get what you want and then it shows you more of what you want. Who, like, how could you hate Pinterest? It's been, it's been the champion since day one. Does 24 hour work best on low to no carb? Is that why you feel safe to try 24? Um, I'm only doing 24 because of my lumen readings, just saying that like, I don't get the best fat burn with extended carbs. So I'm just going to try 24, um, OMAD and plus, um, I don't, because I'm doing low carb, I re I don't need the 36 at this present time because the 36 hours was to cheat and eat whatever I wanted. But since I'm not doing that anymore, I don't have to do a 36. So I'm not going to. Because with the fasting of, um, and when I say 24, I mean the ratio, which is 24. Um, it's 20 hours fasted, four hours eating. I prefer that. I think they call that the warrior. If I'm correct me if I'm wrong, warrior, warrior fasting. Maybe that's the warrior.
Yeah. I like warrior more than OMAD, but it's so easy to just say OMAD because it's its own acronym. But um, the warrior diet restricts eating to 20 hours a day. I like that more than like one meal a day. Who's shoving all that food in one meal? No, thanks. I like giving my stomach like a little bit of time to like process foods, have a big salad, um, take a break, have a dessert, go to bed, you know? So 24 is what I'm going to do, especially on the days I go to the office. I'll just, it's so easy to not eat while I'm in the office and then come home. I get home by like 6 PM, break my fast, <clears throat> have one big ass meal. Um, usually do a live and then, yeah, I go to bed and I wake up and stomach on flat, flat and ass on where's that. <laughs> I was on a rice bench today, like a crackhead. You, a crackhead, not a, yeah, that rice be having you scratching like a fiend though. I understand rice is life. Rice is alive, okay? Hey, Faith, you feel me? Yes. Typically, less than 100 net carbs. Net carbs are the carbs left over after you subtract. Yeah, I aim to do the gross carbs. Is it the gross? Not net. I'm pretty certain it's gross. Yeah. Especially if I'm not, if if it's the week before my period, then maybe I'll do net. But with with this, I want to be as low carb as possible without restricting a cookie or an apple. Which ooh, after this, I'm gonna have an apple. Who craves apples? <laughs> ah, speaking of apples, they didn't. It's not that they didn't. They had gala apples, but they didn't have them loose. And I don't really like the bagged ones because they're always beat up inside the bag. So I saw this bag of Snapdragon apples. Why are they so good? Why are they so good? And the funny thing is um, somebody had introduced them to me during my previous role. And they were so good. Snapdragon apples. Let me see if they're a hybrid apple. Legendary flavor, spicy, sweet, a hint of vanilla. Good. They're so good and juicy and sweet. Just, okay. One of its parents is Honeycrisp. Ah, I knew it was some like hybrid fire. Snapdrag Snapdragon apples. Love them. Got it from Aldi. Aldi's the only place I shop now because I can't afford Walmart. In what world are we not affording Walmart? That's how you know things are ridiculous. I can only afford Aldi at this point in my life. No. I, I Forget craft. I'll just take whatever they have. I'm not paying for no name brands. I usually really like name brand popcorn, especially for my son because he loves popcorn. Child, he going to have to get Aldi brand popcorn. Holes and all. In keto land, low carbs means 20 to 50 net carbs. I'm a keto low carb lover. Oh, really? I didn't know that, Ava. I have not eaten calories in one, oh, 2,000 calories in one day in over five years. I have been eating low carb for over five years and I, I, I was still losing weight. That is why I started ADF. Wonderful. I'd be trying to eat the whole kitchen, but usually satisfied after one meal. Hi, Colleen. Hello, Mercedes. I'm so happy I made it to one of your lives. I'm on my third fast day this week. Congratulations. I started eating five days before my period. It's been a struggle to get back on a <laughs> Try low carb. Everyone is getting the free gift because you guys have been so patient. Yes. Anybody who ordered is getting the free gift. <clears throat> I've been feasting the week before. Once I start bleeding, I'll continue with you. I'm afraid it's going to be hard. Don't be afraid. Low to no carb is the truth. Yes, you are right, Jasmine. 
I gave myself a hard start to get back to ADF. I feel better mentally that I stuck with it. Yeah, you you can't regret. You can't regret that. Colleen Marie Turner, New York Times next best-selling author. I claim it. Wow. That's that's wild. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? I would like to join your fasting. What would you say with someone dealing with hernia? Is it suitable? I don't see why not. Yeah, you should be able to fast with a hernia. I, I, anybody could fast. I can't, any, the people that shouldn't be fasting are pregnant people, breastfeeding people, um, people with disordered eating. Teenagers should not be fasting. Am I missing somebody? That's it. That's it. Everybody can fast. We all fast already. When you go to bed, you're fasting. <laughs> you wake up, you have breakfast. Break fast, right? Are you still glad you spent that year doing ADF even though you're just into low carb now? You and Dr. Mindy have inspired me to do ADF and I'm absolutely loving it. I'll do it until the loss stops. Um, are you still glad you spent that year doing ADF? Absolutely. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for ADF. I would not be here without ADF. I would not be here if it wasn't for ADF. ADF was the most life-changing thing I've ever done after having my kids like the most life-changing thing I have ever done. Point blank period. Point blank period. Um, me being low carb is just um, an evolution of the ADF. Like I should have been doing low carb. Honestly, intermittent fasting and low carb goes together like peanut butter and jelly. I was trying to cheat the process by doing a 36 hour, being a calorie deficit enough and, and eating whatever the hell I want on feast days. But because I was so tired of that horrible feeling transitioning back from running on glycogen into ketones again, I had to do something. And the low carb is why I like the, the week before the period. And then that horrible transition. I, if you are tired of the transition if you're tired of that grogginess, that irritability, that um, sleepiness, that fog, that is you transitioning from running on um, the glycogen to ketones. Okay. That's that, you know, when you have a stick shift and you like change gears and it's never smooth. It's like that. That is you changing gears from running on carbs to running on fat. I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. I hate that. So if I'm just running on fat, if I remain in ketosis, there's no transition. It's just like automatic, like, nope, none, none of that. So if you want to have a smoother transition into your fast days, remain in ketosis. Just at least be as low carb as possible. And then you will avoid it because that transition, so, like I, I was so tired of it and it started to make me dread fast days. I hated it. I really did. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just, let me just take, get, give it up because whatever I was eating that day wasn't even worth it. It's not worth that transition. It wasn't worth it. So much great information I found being on a no spend at the same time helps so much that that's true. That's true. That's true. Oh my God. I have so many. I'm going to just make this two hours. Y'all like I have so many, but this is a FAQ. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat. I have some things. I really need to get through this. These comments like, oh, burning it up. Burning it up. Burning up the chat. Okay, so I read the entire copy yesterday. <clears throat> it helped me get through today. Oh, wonderful. I had one mishap, splash of creamer. So today was a treat fast. 
Yeah, I'm still proud. I have not been able to fast so long. 26 hours in. I'm so happy that the book helped you. It really is a great guide for helping you navigate ADF fully, your feast and fast days, um, being a beginner, what your mindset should look like. And um, when you finally get to your goal, how to maintain it, how to check in with yourself. Okay. So if you want, head down to the link below. Like the book, the physical book is great as well. You're going to get the journal in the back. But the ebook, if you want it right now in a hurry, you can also order the ebook. You'll get it now o'clock. Okay. Yes, prayer and fasting takes you to a whole nother level. You are so sensitive to the presence of God and sensitive to hearing his voice. Yes, you are. Awesome being in tune with the spirit. My life of 27 years. Beautiful, Sharon. I love that for you. Yeah, another challenge, February challenge. It's just seven days. Do you guys want me to do the nightly lives again? Do y'all want a nightly? I'm so sorry. I, I, I swallow so loud and I don't know why. It's like a long ass neck or something. I don't know. I'm so thirsty. It's like electrolytes in here. It's so good. I really like those. Um, so embarrassing. <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> myself. Oh, Colleen. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. All PayPal were refunded. Okay. Yeah. So PayPal orders were refunded because PayPal is holding off on um, payment releases. So until they trust us as an entity that is doing actual business, we stopped PayPal orders. We refunded it. <clears throat> if you do want the book, order again, um, just using regular payment methods, okay? Do you see more body composition, recomposition before weight loss on ADF? Yes. Because you lose fat more than weight. People need to understand that you will lose more fat than weight. And fat... When you lose fat, it looks different than just losing weight. You could you could pee and lose weight. You could have a bowel movement and lose weight. You could, you know, not have the Chinese food and wake up and, and gain weight. Like weight is so fluctuating. But fat loss, it's very apparent. And you will lose fat while doing alternate day fasting because you need it for your fuel. So if you're burning up your fat reserves, you're naturally going to lose fat. And that, that looks different than losing weight because you could lose weight and still look skinny fat. But when you're ADFing, like for me, I'm naturally muscular. All ADF is going to do is just bring out my natural musculature. It's going to maintain my muscle mass as well because losing weight usually means you're eating up your muscles. Like when you're in a severe calorie deficit, um, running too much, those kinds of things uses up your muscles. But in ADF or like fasting, um, it doesn't. It doesn't. It preserves your muscle mass, so you'll just look leaner. But you have to have muscles to begin with. But you'll you'll slim down, lean out. It's a lot of leaning out with ADF. It's a lot of leaning out. You'll lose that water weight. You'll lose it more than anything. You'll lose the inflammation. It's the inflammation that we see. And that's like, ugh. when you're inflamed, the joints are all big and the, and the, the fingers are all swollen. The face is all puffy. No, thank you. No, thanks. Right on schedule on fasting day during ADF at 26 hours. They get really cold. Yeah. That cold. Look at you. Sweets are really sweet when you do low carb. Yes. What was I eating the other day? And I was like, this is too much. And I really want to stop having like artificial sweeteners. There's this greens powder I just bought and it's like so potent. I'm not, I'm, it's really good. It's, it's very good. It, it works. The Kiala greens, 
it works, but I'm, I don't like that sucralose. So I'm more than likely going to try, <clears throat> go back to Bloom um, because it uses Stevia. It's a little more expensive, but oh, the Kiala greens taste so damn good though. It's so good. It's so good, but that's sucralose. I just, it's not worth it. Do you take supplements on fast days? <sighs> I do. Usually things that are like capsules or tablets. No, I really don't have tablets. Tablets are the devil. Gummies are the devil. Get you a capsule or a liquid. This started an hour ago? Yeah, are you like not notified? But I, I, oh, I didn't put it on the YouTube community channel. I usually alert the Facebook group like I'm having a live. Usually my lives start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's very rarely that it does like I do any other time. Like rarely. Because I just come home, I get settled in, and then I'll go on live. <clears throat> the challenge starts today. Today's day one. You did a great job. Great job, guys. Tomorrow, you just do the opposite of whatever you did today. Remain low carb. You could choose OMAD or ADF. You have seven days. You have to pick one. You pick one and you stick to it for seven days. For me, I'm going to do low carb 20 or just 20 hours fasting, four hours feasting for seven days. Yeah. I'm not going to do ADF this time around. Last January, I lost six pounds in seven days. So that could be you. That could be you. I don't even want to, I'm not even weighing myself. I'm not weighing myself because guess what? I don't care. I truly, when I tell you I don't care, you know what I care about? How this stomach is looking. Okay, if I put on a dress and my belly is bong, I'm not pleased. I don't want no bong belly. All right. My, my my stomach is on flat flat. That's all I need to know. I don't care what I do not care what the scale says. If I really wanted something to gauge, I'll put on the tightest jeans I own and see how comfortable they fit. That's it. I don't care about the scale. Stop caring. Stop caring about the scale cuz it does not care about you. I just like just like that ex. <laughs> Stop caring. I promise you, you will release. I think I really think once we get rid of this scale obsession, we'll be able to like live a happier weight loss life, have a happier journey. I probably won't weigh myself until the end of the month again because I don't want to know. I don't, I don't want to know. You know what also that like weighing myself does is it like shakes me out of my, um, consistency. It shakes me out of my consistency. I hate, like, I hate that. Like I will be doing ADF for say four days and I get on the scale and it says something I didn't want to see. And all of a sudden, I, I barely have the, the energy to continue. Like, what? I was doing great for four days, and all of a sudden, I, uh, I can't bother. I don't care. I don't care. The scale is going to have to go sit down somewhere. I pushed it under my bed. I don't even miss her. I'm low-carbing it. I'm enjoying um, leaning out that way. I am going to do the challenge with you guys. I'm going to be doing the 24 which is, it's warrior technically. <clears throat> you could do warrior, you could do ADF, you could do OMAD, whichever one works for you. Just pick one and have it for the seven days. For the February challenge, pick one protocol and do it for the seven days. And at least you go low carb, but if you're not truly low carb, 
you must have a low carb dinner. You must have a low carb dinner. You cannot have any carbs with your dinner. Okay. Any outright carbs. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? Don't have no rice. Don't have no yam and banana and no dumplings. None of that. None of that. Okay. There's no, there's no, um, plantains. Okay. Don't put down the mashed potatoes. No, no potatoes, no potatoes for dinner. Okay. You're, I'm, I'm doing this to help you. It's not to take away from, it's to add to your experience. If you want to see a difference and you do it this way, you're going to get your difference. I'm not just saying this to say this. I'm saying this because I'm living this and I'm, I'm sharing it with you. Yeah. One of the challenge here is the challenge, and which is not even a challenge. If you do it like this, it's actually a breeze. It will be a breeze. So if you, if you able, if you're able to just pick one of those protocols, execute for seven days and have a low carb life, you're going to love yourself. You're going to be like, wow, that was easy. That was wow. Look, look at me, look, look at me. You're, you're going to be like that. I promise you. And you don't need a scale to tell you that you're going to look in the mirror and be like, oh my goodness. Are those cheekbones? I want that for you. That's the challenge. Today's day one. You did a great job. Whatever you did, beautiful. Tomorrow, do the opposite. Tomorrow, do the opposite. Congratulations. You just killed day one. I love you. You're awesome. Tomorrow's day two. Do the opposite. If you ate today, you're fasting tomorrow. If you fasted today, you're feasting tomorrow. Guess what you're feasting on? Low carbs on whatever protocol you decided to go with. All right. That is the challenge. If you want the PDF, it's in the description box. It's not updated. It's still last months, but it's pretty much the same thing. If you just needed a reference doc or you get this guide to help you out. To the person who asked about cottage cheese, try adding it to mashed potatoes. Mashed boohoo? Ah, that sounds interesting though. You do keto ADF. Ooh, I'm scared of you. Frightening. You must be skinty. Are you going to do a eat with me videos, Colleen? You know, the funny thing is I filmed like three of them. <laughs> Guys, when I, before January started, I have so much content I filmed just on my regular camera. So much content. They're still living on my SD card. Why? I have no, I don't, like, the thought of editing makes me want to fight. Just fight the computer, fight life, fight the air. I have no interest in editing. And I don't have disposable income to pay an editor. So this is what you're going to get from me for now. Um, the lives are all I can manage right now. I have a full-time job. I'm a mom. I'm also a part-time student. I'm taking two classes. Uh, you know, I'm I'm an author. <laughs> just, please just bear with me. I I at this point in my life I can't edit. But what I do want to do, which is the primary function of this channel, was to help, educate, motivate, inspire. Um, and teach. And I can do that while doing lives and um, focusing and interacting with you on a live. I could read your questions. You could talk to me in real life and you could get some beneficial advice. Um, just at this season of my life, I have no energy to edit a video. I've, I've even recorded some shorts. They're still living in my phone till this day. One of these days I film is just the editing. I have, I don't know what it is right now. At, at this point in my time, like my life, I just, I can't edit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know so many people are missing my vlogs and um, what I eat in the days. <sighs> if something really good happens, maybe I'll film it. I'll film, I, I could film. It's just the editing. I film so much. I have so much on my SD card and it's just, it can't get edited. 
It sucks. It really does suck. And by the time I even have the energy to edit it, it's totally expired content. Like it doesn't even relate to me anymore. I've been doing keto for over four years on and off. So it's really my lifestyle. Love that for you. Yeah. It's like once you go low carb, it's hard. Okay. I wouldn't say it's hard to go back, but you just understand the power. I've done keto in the past and lost a substantial amount of weight, but it messed up with my child, with my menstrual cycle, something fierce. Keto got me pregnant. Keto got me all the way pregnant. Like I had my second son while on keto and did nothing different. All of a sudden I was just pregnant while doing keto. And I don't think it messed up your, your menstrual cycle. It actually regulated it. It really regulated it. Um, because of that hormonal imbalance, like keto just has a way of rebalancing hormones. That's why it's so effective for diabetics. And, um, yeah, it's like, it like put it in track and that's why I was super fertile. Yikes. I stated that I read it online. If a person eats from a blue plate, it suppresses their appetite. Really? They look pretty. A big blue, dark blue plate. Yeah, rice is high on the glycemic index. Um... I'm just reading through these. Uh, did it okay? <clears throat> Stated that if I read all, okay. I love keto too. I don't crave carbs or sweets at all. Guys, don't forget to give me a like on this video so it could reach more people and YouTube knows this is good content. I'd appreciate it so much. Are you taking anything for regulation? I've been taking, okay. Um, pink lady apples are incredible too. Mm -mm. Apples and peanut butter is heavenly. Yes. What have I been eating apples with? Yeah, I, apples and peanut butter is good. Um, I gotta be aware of those nuts though. Like it's so easy to overeat. Vexinja. Hi, honey. One love from Kingston. Booyaka, booyaka. Kingston, don't play with you. Are you going to watch the Bob Marley movie? I'm very curious. In a government yard in Trenchton. I don't know. Like, something about hearing a bad Jamaican accent throughout a movie, it's like, it's too cringy. I can't focus on the content. I'm just like, why is this accent so bad? Because there's nothing worse that us Jamaicans can't stand is like a bad accent. It's one thing if it's like a tolerable accent, but if it's a bad accent, we can't, we can't take the movie seriously. We can't, we can't pay attention to what's going on. The plot don't even make sense because the accent is just so far removed. So, and I know the actor is English. I believe he also played Malcolm X in a previous movie. So, he getting the, better not sound like Brad Pitt. <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, I stick to what I know. I can have, make my own desserts and make sure I'm full with my meals. Great. How do I start ADF? The first thing you need to do is get this guide. It's an awesome guide. It has everything I've ever said in these videos all in one. You could order the physical book. So you could write at the back or you could get the ebook. It is wonderful. Um, it, it gives you everything from A to Z. You ordered both, Sheila. You're, you're going to enjoy it. You're really going to have 
a great, you know, what's great about this too, is it's, I know other authors such as Jen and um, Mindy, they have their books, but is it an ADF particular book? No, these are for the ADFers, my happy ADFers. And this is specifically for ADFing. Um, you know, they talk about intermittent fasting and various um, protocols and fasting patterns. This is specifically focused for ADFers because ADF is a different type of beef, beast. Like it's 36 hours is powerful, but it was the protocol that got me to where I need to go quick, fast, in a hurry. That's very transformative ADF because it's long enough to really get into those fat stores. If you find yourself having resistant weight loss, ADF might be the key. ADF might be the key. What are your thoughts with taking fat burners every day while doing ADF? Um, I'm not familiar with fat burners, so I couldn't tell you. Uh, I'm pretty certain fat burners. I have no, I have no <laughs> thoughts on fat burners. I don't know if they're great for your heart. That's the only thing I'm thinking about is like your heart health. I know some of them cause heart palpitations, but I'm not sure. And I'm, I don't want to say something wrong and deter anyone because I'm not against AIDS. I'm not health AIDS. <laughs> I'm not against health aids. I'm not against um, weight loss tools. I'm not against get you the Ozempic. If you want the surgery, get the surgery. I, I'm all for it because they're all tools. Um, get you the prescription, Take pop the pills if you need to. Um, they're tools. They're not, if they were a cure, people be so, don't get me started because some of y'all know my famous rants about struggle Olympics. But <clears throat> if you need if you need help, get the help. It is a tool to start your journey. It is not the journey itself. So if people are mad when others take Ozempic and lose weight, it's not because they took a shot and then just lost weight. It's because the shot helped them regulate something within themselves to start making better choices. That's all. Some people could look at us and be like, oh, y'all cheating. I, I always thought of ADF as a cheat code because I was able to eat what I wanted and still lose weight. They're tools. They're tools. So if you find a fat burner that's safe and um, gut friendly, go for it please look all the way into it. But I, I don't have any experience with fat burners. <clears throat> I journaled so much today and you are right. It helps so much. Say it again, live in the middle. Say it again. Let me, let me find the journaling portion of this book. Okay. Let me read. Let me, let me give you a little reading time with Colleen from the, uh, the fa, let me put this, the, the Fast to Feast ADF Guide. Wish I had my, my glasses. I'd put them on and be fancy. The importance of journaling, right? Let's, let's read. Reading time. Journaling has become essential in my weight loss. It's become the cornerstone, the foundation of my weight loss. The psychology behind weight loss is often overlooked. A lot of us thought we were weak and undisciplined, unmotivated, and we didn't want it badly enough. In all actuality, a lot of times, it really just comes down to programming. We have been set up, sometimes since childhood, for disordered eating, for emotional binge eating, and looking at food through skewed lens. This does not apply to everyone, but for some of us, weight loss is more than diet and exercise. In my observation, Two thirds of weight loss, which is a major chunk, two thirds of weight loss is about our mental state. We have to make the decision, keep the decision, and maintain the decision. I like that. We have to make the decision, keep the decision, and maintain the decision. 
Mars. That's why so many people end up gaining the weight back after losing it. It's because they went in with microwave mentality, wanting instant gratification. When people lose weight as fast as possible, nine times out of 10, they will gain it back as fast as possible. This is because during the process, they didn't address the root issues that cause the weight gain in the first place. The root is typically disordered thinking about food. And, and there's more, but I'll stop there. That was just the intro. Um, I have a video about journaling for weight loss. If you're interested, you can look that up under my videos. But that really is a big part of weight loss that I stopped talking about because nobody respects it. But when somebody does bring it up, I'm so, so, so thankful because they understand. They know that key. And I said, like, two-thirds of it is mental. Everybody, as I said, as I said, everybody knows it's diet and exercise. If it was so simple and we all know that, then why are we still struggling? The mindset. All right, so if you want to read more about that, <clears throat> I have a chapter dedicated to journaling. It's, as Live in the Middle said, she journaled so much today and she was right. And I was right. It helps so much. It helps. It helps. It helps. It is, if you're an emotional eater, if you're a binge eater, if you are a triggered eater, you, mm, that's, it might be the key. It might be the missing key. Hi, Nancy. I was not losing weight on OMAD, so I'm having to do ADF. How long were you doing OMAD? I found vitamin C capsules because of you. Oh, really? Ha. Ah, yeah, vitamin C is great. Yes, nightly lives. Okay. What's the warrior? It's 20 hours fasting, four hours eating. Um, I don't know, sweet potatoes be calling. I'm picking it up sometimes. You can have your sweet potatoes, have it for lunch. I ordered your book, Princessa. I can't wait to receive it. I ordered it yesterday. Awesome. They'll be going out soon. We're getting all the shipping together. They're going to come out, okay? Um, what is your take on chickpea pasta and lentil pasta? Is it okay to eat while low carbs ADF? Um, if you are going to have it, have a, a small portion of it, preferably for lunch. When I say, when I say this is a challenge, y'all, li li low to no carb dinners. Okay. You can have it in your low carb lifestyle. I promise you that's okay. It's low. It's mainly protein. I still have chick. I have chickpeas. I love roasting chickpeas in my air fryer. Sprinkling it on salads. Love it. Okay. But for dinner, don't have it for dinner. Don't eat it for dinner. It's not for dinner during this challenge. During this challenge. Your challenge for these seven days, depending on the protocol you choose, on all protocols, okay, you're going to have a no carb, low to no carb dinner. Low to no carb dinner and low carb overall. Okay. If you want to have your pasta, your, your chickpea pasta for lunch, great. Not for dinner. Okay. Your, your dinner should look like a protein and vegetables. Your dinner should look like protein and vegetables. Your dinner should look like protein and vegetables. For seven days, okay, or whatever your feast days, whenever your feast days are, your dinner. And this is only because I want you to understand the ease in which you could slip into fast days or fasting if you haven't already experienced the magic of just um, remaining in ketosis throughout your entire journey. Like it's, it's wild. And it's, really smooth sailing. Like sometimes I really have to remember, remind myself to eat like, Oh, Colleen, it's, it's damn near three o'clock. Like you haven't eaten yet. And then I'll be like, Oh, I guess I'll just work out. I will still work out. Like, and I don't feel groggy. I don't feel tired. I don't feel slumped. I feel energetic. It's 
really crazy. And before I was just like, I wanted to sleep through my fast days. And it's because of that transition from carbs to fat. It's not smooth. I just want you to experience the smoothness. Um, and then, you know, if you feel like, Hey, you know, I could, I could pass on the low carb. At least you tried. That's the challenge. February challenge. Okay. Would you consider having an intern, someone who would be willing to edit for you in exchange for something? You can do one-on-one -on -one coaching for them or whatever, come up with. Um, I, just, <laughs> I just, it just sounds like more work. It just, do you guys really want to see stuff that, that, that much? Like what, what is it that you want to see in my edited videos? Like, my what my what it what I eat in a days, um, workouts. Like I would rather do shorts, because at least I could just do them in my phone while I'm bored at work, rather than like sitting down on the computer and editing. I could do shorts. I've been meaning to cut up these videos, like these lives, and start putting them on TikTok and and YouTube. It still hasn't happened yet. Like something about editing, I just like, I rebuke it right now. And that's just where I'm at right now. Please bear with me, okay? I did ADF. I did a month of ADF, sometimes only 24, 21, and 36. Today I checked my measurements. I lost six centimeters on your chest, hips, and three centimeters off your waist. I stopped weighing myself. I eat mostly carbs. Wonderful, JD. The power of ADF, y'all. The power of ADS, ADF. My hair shedding is insane for me on ADF. Are you taking a break the week before your period? Um, that's usually the symptom of hair shedding and or you're not getting enough nutrients on your feast day. I started ADF on October, lost 15 pounds. I'm now doing 15 hour fast, five days, 36 hours, one day and no fast one day. Beautiful. I'm glad that you have a plan for yourself. You went to the premiere, loved it. We're waiting for the accent. He didn't disappoint. He did his thing. Okay. Okay. I like to hear that. All right. Um, Kimberly, it could be your nervous system is active and make it passive. Um, magnesium, potassium, massage, and castor oil. Yeah. I wondered why they didn't get one of Bob Marley's sons or grandsons to play him. Probably wasn't young enough. They all old. I just found your channel Sunday and started 80 up this week. It's easier for me to stick to the plan that I thought it would be. Oh, awesome. I love that for you. Please, um, I would love if you could join the ADF face, um, Facebook group and um, keep us posted on your updates. We would love to see you if you're not already there. On keto, you will not be hungry. True, 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 true. True, there's just no... There's just no trigger. There's no trigger. How do you feel about your how do you feel about 22 year olds fasting? Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead and do your thing. If you have um if you are like there's a teen at the end of your age, no fast. I would I would rather teens start exercising more cuz you have to think about it. When we were young, right? And I'm 34. When I was young, yeah, we had we had access to like junk food and stuff. You know, we had our, our parents cooking. We were going to the store with like two dollars and coming back with a brown paper bag full of junk and we ate. But what did we do? What did us children do? We played. We played. Children played, teenagers are active in school sports and after school activities. And then, you know, in college, you're usually doing something. If you, if you don't, then you will gain the college, the freshman 15. Why? Because you're no longer active. You don't have um, home cooking. Y you see, it's not necessarily that you're old, is that you, you're not living that lifestyle anymore. It's really your lifestyle. So people are like, oh yeah, when I was in college or, you know, I was, I was 120 pounds and now I'm 38 and now I'm fat. 
I'm like, well, what were you doing in college that you weren't doing now? Is it really your age or is it because you're not on the soccer team anymore? Like, you know, I would rather teenagers get more activity because it's not like, well, some teens eat horribly, but we all ate horribly as kids. We were just way more active. So I don't want teens fasting. They need their nutrients. Um, they have a bit more growing to do. So, yeah. Thanks to you, I have religiously done ADF since last April. Feel great, but hit a long plateau will add in low carb. Yeah, I th that was always my plan. I knew my plan when I started AD ADF in um, April, just like you, April of 2021. I knew that, okay, I'm just going to go into ADF. I'm going to do ADF. When I hit a plateau, I'm going to start working out more. And then when I hit another plateau, then I'm going to change my diet. I always had a plan. Three things. First, fast. Then for me was exercise, but it really should be diet. And then exercise. But those three things, if you're hitting a plateau, if you're already alternate day fasting, then those two, diet and exercise, is what you need to start switching up. If you're not exercising, start walking more. The first thing you should do is start work, walking more. You need to start walking more. You're not walking enough. It's just like if you think you're drinking water, you're not drinking enough. If you walk, start, you don't have to start some crazy regimen. You don't have to be jumping and doing plyometrics. You don't have to do anything overly strenuous. You need to start walking more. And if you want to go hit 10 K steps, hit 10 K steps. That's all you get a mini stepper, start marching in front of the TV while you're watching it. Like just don't sit down and, and watch. Just don't sit down and, and work from home. Do something, get more steps. You're not getting enough. Um, and clean up your diet. Even if you don't clean it up, at least add more fruits and vegetables, okay? Um, any tips to get lean legs during fasting? Um, that's funny because I have the opposite problem. I want thick legs. Lean legs during fasting. If you want to incorporate during fasting... If you can incline walk, that's a great way to lean out your legs, incline walking. Whether you're walking up a hill, walking up steps, or walking on 12% or more treadmill, lean legs and walking. Um, I was trying to give you less work. <laughs> yeah, I, anything that I have to like put my mind on, like now I got to start doing approvals. Like I just... Sometimes I can't juggle everything. You could have everything. You just can't have it all at once. And that's okay. Um, sometimes just things have to stop for a moment. All right. I got to start wrapping this up. I skipped your question. What was your question, Coco? I didn't see it. What's the highest amount of grams you eat during your feast? Grams of carbs? Um, I don't count them. I just make sure they're low carb to begin with. If I know something is a little higher carb, I'll have just less of it. So like I'll have some sweet potato. If it's not like the week of before my period, I'll just have like a little sprinkle. I'll add some cranberries to my salads. Not a whole bunch, just for some like, you know, texture and flavor. I stay as low carb as possible. Today I had a three egg omelet with vegetables and some cheese. That's it. And I had no toast. Did I want toast? Yeah, it would have been nice with some toast, but I didn't have toast. And that held me for hours. Actually, I didn't even eat that until 2.30. I had, I had that at 2.30. I was fasted the entire day and I had to like shake myself into it. Like, honestly, I don't even know why I ate. I just felt like I should eat. <laughs> I could have easily not eaten, but I do want to get, make sure my protein is up because I don't, I don't think I like how I feel without high protein because I did have hair shedding as well. <clears throat> when I didn't keto, it was hard for me to meet my protein goals because I didn't have an appetite. Interesting. 
I started fasting at 14. Okay. I wouldn't recommend it to children at all. I don't want children to be fasting. I want children to be moving. Children should be moving. That's the problem. Children are still growing. If you're still growing, you shouldn't be depleting yourself of nutrients. Either clean up your diet, but most of all, children should be moving. It makes me really sad when I go outside and I don't see like, I don't hear kids anymore. Like that makes me so sad. I don't hear double dutch. I don't hear playing in the streets. I don't see children riding bikes. I don't, you know, I don't see tag. I don't, it makes me sad. I don't even see the ice cream truck. That was exercise, running down the ice cream truck. Children just are sad, 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 sad. Um, I'm going to start wrapping this up, y'all. Don't give me no more questions, please. What do I do if the challenge is the week before my period? Don't do the challenge. Why can fasting not be a permanent lifestyle? ADF is not permanent. You could fast for the, you could do intermittent fasting, but ADF is not something you can do for the rest of your life. You can incorporate a 36 hour fast here and there, but eventually you're going to reach your goal weight. What do you want to be a skeleton? Um, to know how much water you need, divide your weight by 16 and love that. ADF reduces and stops inflammation. No more sore knees and ankles. Sugar is the main cause. Very true. Do you meal prep for people? I don't. I want ADF and OMAD as my new style. You can. With ADF, I eat plant-based and feel great. I love the fact that I could still eat my ground provisions and veggie rundung. Mm -hmm. She said rundung. Do you know I tell stew? I tell stew is wonderful. How do I stop the nauseous, dizzy feeling when fasting? Get you some electrolytes. And try low carb. All right. So that's it. I have to, I have to go y'all. I have work in the morning <laughs> and it's 9, 17 PM where I am. So, um, I hope this was informational, educational. Don't forget. You can shop the ADF guide fast to feast. I made with, um, Ava Monroe, um, very informational, very, very educational. If you are a newbie, you need this. It is everything I've ever preached in all my videos, all in one guide. It'll help you so much. The link is right down below. It is the first link. Hit there. You get the ebook as well. Have a wonderful night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.